Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? All right, let's get back to Iraq. There was a content creator who absolutely misinterpreted the article. We need to clarify the mistakes that were made so that people don't panic. Let's get into this. Before we get started, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber, please do so because when you do, it helps out the channel and I certainly do appreciate it. You can follow me over on other platforms. I do have a, my own group over on Facebook called Pimby's Investment Chat. Over here, we do talk about gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, as well as foreign currency investments. So head on over here and join us. It's free to do so. In here, I do post updates if I should get on suspension from YouTube or get removed from YouTube. And you want to know what happened to me, I'll let you know right here in this group. I can be found on Twitter, MeWe, YouTube. And the cool thing about YouTube, if you come over here and you join and you find my channel, I got videos going back, I believe, a couple years. So if you want to see some older videos that I have on Nisera Jacera, Gold Silver, Cryptos, come on over here and join. Look me up and check out my videos. You can also find me on Odyssey, catch me on Rumble. When I say that the links for all these are down below in the description, some of you don't know what I'm talking about, it's real simple. To go down to the bottom right here of any of my videos, see this, this is the description. Hit show more, and there are all the links to all the platforms I just spoke about. So if you do wanna hit on over to Money Middles, just click it, and there you are. So come on over, join us, I look forward to having you. All right, so here's the article. It says, we are not thinking of returning the dollar to its previous price. And the problem began under Saddam. So when they say return it to the previous price, for some reason, the individual thought that meant return it to the 322 rate. That's not what they're talking about. Nowhere in the article does it say the 322 rate. It just says return it to its previous price. And if we talk about the previous, that means the one before this one. And that would be the 1,450 dinars. He's talking about they're not going to devalue the Iraqi dinar. A senior official at the Central Bank of Iraq denied any trend to return the dollar exchange rate to its former state and stressed that efforts are focused on reducing the gap between the dollar price and the parallel markets and its official price. Jonas is the Assistant Director General of Investments and Remittance Departments at the Central Bank. He said there are many positives and measures taken on the dollar, indicating that the problem of dollarization in Iraq began since 1990. Except for window dollars, central bank allows banks to sell at market rate. Exchange companies are back on and demand will be reduced. Experts explains the decision to sell the dollars at the market price. This was Giannis' statement. The origins of the problem is the dollarization of the Iraqi economy after 1990 and its extensions until the current period. There are foreign companies operating in Iraq that take their contracts with the state in U.S. dollars and are supposed to receive their dues in dollars and transfer to their bank accounts abroad. And this is one of the concerns of the Iraqi economy, which connects the dinar to the dollar. The intended companies are contracted with SEPT contracts with Iraqi secondary companies and also their contracts in U.S. dollars. Today we meet the Korean and Japanese companies operating in Iraq and they raise their problems that their contracts with Iraqi employees are all in dollars. And I asked them, do you deal in dollars with your employees in your country? Which makes sense. If there is a foreigner working in Korea, they're not going to ask for whatever currency they come from. They're, they're going to get paid in their local currency. That's the point this guy's trying to make. Look, right now you guys are paying them in dollars. We want you guys to get paid in Iraqi dollars. This will strengthen the dinar because there's going to be a more of a demand on the Iraqi dinar. As part of solving this problem, we agree that banks would send U.S. dollars to the balances of these companies and their accounts abroad. And then bring the amount into Iraq to distribute it to their employees in cash and bear the cost of transportation, shipping, insurance, and others. About the dollar coming from abroad... We do not prevent these companies from having workers and their remittances are declining their accounts in dollars. And we do not prevent a transfer from coming to a company and staying in its account and converting banks to the salaries of the employees working in a foreign company to a dinar is never allowed. There's no problem in his balance remaining in the bank in dollars. Our problem is in cash and withdrawals from this balance. So if they want to do a transfer in payments in dollars to these people's accounts, that's fine. 
It's when they try to take the money out of their account and they're in Iraq. It has to be in Iraqi dinars, which makes total sense. So continue paying your employees in American dollars, not a problem. But when they withdraw their money and they live in Iraq, you're not going to get U.S. dollars. You're going to get it in Iraqi dinars, as they should. For example, this person wants to spend it outside of Iraq. They're talking about the U.S. dollars. No problem. Or buy an apartment with it, which I don't get that part. <laughs> or to be a trader and buy goods. We have no problem with it. So do business outside of Iraq. If you want to buy an apartment, I don't get that part, but okay. I mean, if you're going to buy an apartment in Iraq, maybe they're talking about the digital dollar, but if you have to withdraw cash to buy your apartment, it should be in Iraqi dinars. If you're going to use your account to do trade, that's different because the money is done digitally. It's only when you pull the cash out that they have a problem. We have exceptions. Japanese companies operating in the field of schools and companies operating in the port of Fa. We hand over their remittances in U.S. dollars to fuel the demand for the dollar. The imported dollar is starting to increase supply, and we hope that the price will decrease in the near terms. So before 2022, the situation was different, and everything is in our hands. But today, it is out of our hands. We have international requirements. If we do not meet them, the transfers will not pass. And the company, if it does not have a website updated, the transfers will not pass. So you have to prove that you're a legitimate company. Positive aspects of the measures on the dollar, our reserves are gradually rising. And our banks opened accounts in correspondent banks. Chinese channels published a while ago that Iraq began settlements in the Chinese yuan currency. And this is an achievement. That has more to do with the banks that started using other international currencies instead of just the U.S. dollar. They have now opened up trade in those foreign currencies, which is a big help for Iraq. Since we have a delegation that went to Turkey to open up channels with the Turkish banks so they can start using the Turkish lira. So yeah, that's going to be a help to both currencies. And open up accounts for Iraqi banks and organize electronic payments with them. Trade exchange with Turkey is great. Good. There's no tendency to re-exchange the exchange rate as before. Re-exchange. <laughs> Reinstate. <laughs> There's no tendency to reinstate the exchange rate as before. And we have tended to reduce the gap in the exchange rate between the official and the parallel markets. Companies that fund from the window and discover devices cooperating with us that use the black market price, these companies will be held accountable. So if you get caught as a company using a black market, then there's going to be trouble for you. The most important point, we are currently focusing on the regulation of trade, especially with Iran. So they've worked hard to solve the problems and they've already taken steps necessary to solve those issues. So no, they're not talking about the 322 rate. It says right here, the previous. Previous means the one before. I think the concern is because the parallel markets, there's such a huge gap between the official rate and the black market rate. I guess the chatter is that if they reduce the Iraqi dinar again, that would close the gap. No, in my opinion, it just makes it worse. If anything, they should increase the Iraqi dinar because if you give them a reason to keep the dinar over the dollar, that's going to help close that gap between the official rate and the parallel market rate. An Iraqi delegation will go to Turkey tomorrow to discuss the possibility of opening correspondence accounts for Iraqi banks. So this delegation is heading over to Turkey to get these things ironed out. Said so the delegation included the financial advisor to the prime minister, three officials of the Central Bank of Iraq, and directors of 12 Iraqi banks to hold talks with a number of Turkish financial and banking institutions including the Central Bank of Turkey and Association of Banks, in addition to the Turkish Banking Regulation and Supervision Agency. So they are going there to iron out what they need to do for this currency swap. Said he pointed out in the talks, we're focused on a number of topics, including discussing the Turkish banks for the purpose of opening correspondent accounts for our Iraqi banks and in various foreign currencies to be used in accounting settlements between the two countries and resolving all obstacles facing the two parties in implementing this process. The organization of trade exchange between the two countries will also be discussed through the Turkish and Iraqi customs authorities matching the goods supplied to Iraq with the financial transfers documents through the foreign currency sale and purchase window in order to protect the interests and stability of trade between the two countries. So these are all the little technical things that IREC has to do to make sure that they have their ducks in a row with these other countries that they're doing currency swaps with. So this is just a continuation of what we've been talking about for a couple of weeks now. Uh, Turkey is one of the countries that Iraq will be holding their currency and Turkey will be holding the Iraqi dinar, the currency swap. So this is good. 
So the Ministry of Finance will offer the second reconstruction bonds next Tuesday and announce the details and numbers. What I like about the bonds that they're offering is the fact that they're for a short period. This one here is for two years and this one's for four years. And this is how much you get paid on the two-year bonds is 6% interest per year. And on the four-year bond, it's 8%. So they are selling bonds out there for individuals who are interested. This is going to be your interest per year, depending on what term you choose. And of course, this money is going to be used to help with infrastructure and reconstruction. The last time they had major success with this, let's hope that continues this time. Parliamentary finance determines the only factor for the stability of the dollar and the dinar. So the Finance Committee in Parliament considered that diversifying the source of foreign currencies adoptions in commercial transactions is the only way to address the problem of the growing demand for the dollar and create a parallel market for the sale of hard currencies. The central bank responded to our previous call on addressing the problem of growing demand for the dollar and creating a parallel market for the sale of hard currency it has come a long way in the task of stabilizing the markets. Through the initiations of opening various foreign currency exchanges and the adoption of the clearance system in the trade exchange with various countries and the central bank has come a long way in getting rid of the dominance of the dollar and strengthening the Iraqi dinar and its entry onto the line of global trade transactions. Yep, that's the kind of news we definitely want to hear. You stress the importance of this trend as a viable solution and a deliberate strategy to open new horizons that ensure the facilitation of trade transaction procedures at various levels, restressing full support for the steps of the Iraqi Central Bank. You stress that is full support for these steps of the Iraqi Bank is moving steadily towards the real treatment of the crisis, looking forward to other steps, restoring stability to the market and ending the problem of fluctuation of exchange rates and increasing demand for the dollar. Well, I think as soon as we come into this new year, let's see if they're able to do what they had set out to do, which is de-dollarize altogether. So there you have it. I just wanted to just clarify because a content creator was thinking that they were talking about the 322 rate. No, that's not what they're talking about. People were up in arms about it and you don't need to be, you guys. Hopefully that clears everything up. Anyways, that's it for now. I look forward to your comments and I'll catch you later. I'm out.